Ladies and gentlemen, I have a question for you when I'm starting. How many of you in the room have volunteered for a candidate or for President Trump this year? A lot of them. That means you showed up. My opponent didn't show up. My opponent didn't show up at the Republican Executive Committee meetings, and so was dropped from membership. Florida statute 103.091 states that the state committee man or committee woman must be a member in good standing of the Republican Executive Committee in the county where they're registered. And that's what the law says. I don't care what anybody else tells you, that's what the Florida statute says. You can read it in plain English. It's there in plain English. Do you want to elect somebody to the state committee that didn't bother to show up at the county committee? Couldn't be bothered. Couldn't make three meetings in a row without an excuse. Or with an excuse. Couldn't show up, and they want you to elect them to the state committee. If they can't show up here, why do you expect them to show up in the state? I've been showing up for seven years. I've been on the Republican Executive Committee in good standing for seven years. I started in the news business in 1968 when I was a 17-year-old kid, working in radio, worked in newspapers, worked in TV. I was a TV news producer, senior news producer, CBS affiliate in Buffalo, New York. I covered elections my entire life. I started in Nixon. Covered them all, all the way through. I can smell BS a mile away. Okay. I was never a Republican at the time because I kept out of the party so they couldn't say I was taking sides. Because I believe, in, in my ethic, that news people should not take sides. Okay? I, I'm ashamed of the profession that I have left, but I have used my skills that I gathered over 50 years for the Republican Party ever since I came here. I jumped on the Trump train with Tony Ledbetter in 2016. How do you did too? From the moment he came down that escalator, my wife looked at me, said, he's the guy. I knew it. I knew it. Donald Trump changed America. Donald Trump is saving yeah. America. I got a call last week from a reporter at the Daytona Beach News Journal. He wanted me to tell him what I thought of a Donald Trump. He called it a commercial. Literally. It's the commercial. You've all seen it. Where somebody's calling 911 and the answering machine comes on and says, we, we can't be there right now, so press this and this and press that and that. He said, don't you think that's fear mongering? Somebody says, some people say it's fear mongering. I blew up. I said, I'll tell you what fear mongering is. It's burning down federal courthouses. It's rioting in the streets. It's defacing federal monuments. It's beating up elderly people in the streets. It's breaking into homes. I said, listen, somebody's banging down your door to rape your wife and kill your kids. Who are you going to call, a social worker? You're going to call the police. I told this reporter that his question was an insult to my intelligence. I also told him this. The American people are fed up. We're going to rise up. We're going to, we're bad as hell, and we're not going to take it anymore. And you're going to find out on November 3rd, just exactly how yeah. bad we are. Yeah. And anybody in this room who doesn't support Trump better think twice. Because if we yeah. don't elect that president, this country is lost. He's the only thing standing between oh. us and Antifa, Black Lives Matter Incorporated, which is really Marxism, anarchy in the streets, and complete wanton chaos on our cities. We cannot let what's happening in cities like New York, Los Angeles, and Chicago come to places like Port Orange. I ask for your vote. Victor Waldorf Baker. Thank you very much.